So in this multi-part tutorial series, we will be creating the dinosaur game using Python and Pygame. If you want to use the assets that I use for this tutorial series, then they're linked in the description and in the pinned comment, so you can check them out and download them. By the end of this video, you're going to have something that looks a little bit like this. We're going to have our dinosaur that's running across the screen, and we're going to have our ground, which is always going to be moving to the left. In future videos, we're going to be adding the obstacles, the pterodactyls, the clouds, and the score system, so stay tuned for that. Now, if you want to see more content, make sure to like and subscribe so I can continue to make these videos. But with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial, and let's make the dinosaur game using Python and Pygame. I'm going to start out with this script that has a little bit of boilerplate that creates a blank screen for us and that labels it with Dino Game. So you can go ahead and copy this into your own script right now, but I'm just going to skip past it because it gets a bit bland repeating the same thing over and over again. But we'll just run it to see what we get. So as I said, we have this blank white screen that says Dino Game on it. Now we can start writing the actual code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the ground and we're going to put it on the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to use for our ground is going to be a Pygame surface. A surface is just like an image that you can bring in from somewhere else and you can incorporate that in your game. So I'll leave some space and I'll say a comment. I'll say surfaces just to be more organized. And now we can create our surface. So it's going to be called ground and it will be equal to pygame.image.load. So this function it takes in the path of the image and it converts it into a pygame surface which is stored in the ground variable. So the path for our image in this case is going to be located at assets slash ground.png. And this assets folder is linked in the description and in the pinned comment so you can go check it out and download it and inside of the assets folder we also have some other images and we have a font so it's really important that you download this to get the best experience now we're going to create a rect for our ground a rect in pygame is just a rectangle that goes around a surface and it allows us to keep track of some information for example, if we wanted to check if our dinosaur was touching the ground, then we could put a rect around our ground object and we could use some logic to check if it's touching. So let's create our rect. I'll go down and I'll say ground rect is equal to ground dot get rect. So the get rect method of the ground object just puts a rect around our ground object and we can specify where we want it to be. So we want the center of the rect to be at the position 640 on the x axis and 400 on the y axis. I just found that this was a good position, but you can play around with this if you would like. So let's go ahead and test out our ground. Let's put it on the screen to see what it looks like. So below screen.fill white, I'll say screen dot blit ground with ground rect. And what this will do is it will take the ground surface and it will put it at the position of the ground rect. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I'll run the script and it will give us the same blank screen. But this time, as you can see, we have our ground that is in the center of our screen. But the problem is that the ground does not cover the entirety of our screen and we need to scale it up. And this is really simple with Pygame. Let's go back and scale up our image. So below ground, I'll say ground is equal to pygame.transform.scale, which is a function that scales up or down an image. And we are going to pass in the image we want to scale up, which is ground. And we are going to scale it to the position of 1280 wide and 20 tall. So this is going to span the entirety of our 1280 pixel long screen, and it's going to be 20 pixels high because it's pretty thin. So let's save our code and run it again. And this time it's going to span the entirety of the screen. So we get the whole ground. Now we're going to want to make this ground move to the left. And to do that, we're going to create a new variable that stores the X position of the ground. So let's go below here and let's create the variable. So ground x 
is what we'll call it, and it'll be defaulted to zero. Now, inside of here, instead of saying screen.blit ground with ground rect, we're gonna say screen.blit ground with a tuple that has ground X and a static Y position, which is gonna be 360. And we are also gonna decrease ground X by one every iteration of the while loop so that we're always moving to the left. So we'll say ground X minus equals one. And let's go ahead and run our code. And this time our ground is gonna to move to the left. But the problem here is that it obviously gets cut off and we have this blank space. So to fix this, we're gonna to need to create another instance of our ground and blit it to the screen twice. So this is just gonna give the player an illusion that the ground is infinite, but it's just two separate grounds that are being coordinated together to give us that illusion. So what we're gonna do is we'll say screen.blit ground again with ground X, but this time we're gonna increase it by 1280 pixels to put it on the right side. So 1280 and the Y position is gonna remain the same. It's gonna be 360. And now we're gonna get two grounds that are gonna be joined together. So our ground will last for a little bit longer. As you can see, the ground is lasting for a bit longer, but still eventually it's going to get cut off if we just wait for a bit. So as you see, it gets cut off still. And fixing this just requires one if statement. So we wanna check if the ground X has gone past a certain point, then we should revert it back to zero. So that point for us is gonna be negative 1280. So we're gonna check if the ground X has gone past negative 1280, so is less than or equal to negative 1280, then it should be equal to zero. And this time the ground is actually gonna be infinite. So let's run it again. And this is just gonna go on forever. So we have our ground on the screen and we can go ahead and move on. However, I wanna create another variable that just stores the speed of the game because it's gonna be useful later on. So again, I'll, firstly, I'll fix that. Okay, now again, I'll add a comment that says variables to store where we're gonna put our variables. And the variable name is gonna be equal to game speed. This is gonna be a global variable that stores how fast we want the ground to move, which is just basically how fast we want the game to go. And we're gonna start this off as five. And if you've played the dinosaur game before, then you know that the game speed is increasing all the time. So we're gonna say that the game speed should increase by a very small number every iteration of the while loop. So the game speed will be increased by something like 0 0.0025. Now this will become much more apparent later on. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the actual dinosaur. So the dinosaur is just gonna be a class and it's gonna have a couple of methods. The methods are the initializing method, which is init, which is just standard. And the second method is the update method. And the third method is the animate method, which will animate the dinosaur to make it look like it's running. So I'll go up here and once again, I'll fix that. And then I'll make another comment that says classes. And now we can create our dino class. So we'll say class dino. And we're gonna use the concept of inheritance. So we're gonna be inheriting from pygame.sprite dot sprite. So this will allow us to use all of the stuff inside of the sprite class for our own dino class. So this is very useful. And by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you don't know much about classes in Python, then I really highly recommend learning about that before continuing with this tutorial series because it's pretty essential. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and create our three methods. As I said, the first one is going to be init. So we're going to say init and inside of the parameters, we're gonna to have to pass self as always. And we're gonna be adding two more parameters afterwards, but for now, we have to say super.init, which will initialize the parent class. So this is the parent class, and by saying super.init, we are initializing it to use all the stuff inside it. 
Now, the two parameters we're going to pass are going to be X position and Y position. And we're also going to store them inside of our init class by saying self.x equals x pause and self.y equals y pause. All right, now we want to animate the dinosaur. And to do that, we're going to create our animate method. So def animate. And once again, we have to pass in self. And inside of here, the logic is going to be we have a list that contains our two frames and the frames are just going to be the standing still and the running and we're going to cycle through them really fast to give the player an illusion of running. So first we're going to have to create that list. So let's say self dot running sprites is equal to an empty list. Now we're going to put two surfaces inside of this list. So firstly, we'll say self dot running sprites dot append and the image is going to be pi game dot image dot load assets slash dino one dot png and we're going to duplicate this and we're going to do the same thing with dino two dot png we're also going to store a variable that stores the index of the current image which will be self dot current image and we're going to default that to zero. And we're also going to store the actual surface in its own variable called self dot image. And it will default to be self dot running sprites at the index of self dot current image. Lastly, we're going to create a rect for this. So we're going to say self dot rect equals self dot image dot get underscore rect. And the center is going to be equal to self dot x self dot y and actually i'll put this after our definitions of x and y so now we can go back to our animate method and we can write the logic for animating so the first thing we need to do is increase the current image by one so we'll say self dot current image plus equals one and we will say if self dot current image is greater than one, then we should default it back to zero. Finally, we're going to say self dot image equals self dot running sprite at the index of self dot current image. And we are done with the animate method. All that's left is to create the update method. And inside the update method, for now, we're just going to call the animate method. So we'll say self dot animate. And that should be animate. And for now, we're done with the dino class. So now we can go ahead and actually create the dino object. So let's go down here and let's make another comment that says objects. And the object will be dinosaur. And we're going to address it to be dino. And the X position should be 50 and the Y position should be 360. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a group single for our dinosaur object and we're going to store it inside of that group single. A group single in Pygame is just a container for any kind of object and it's really useful. We can use it to call a function on our object and we will be doing that later on. So let's say, let's make another comment. Let's say groups. And we're going to create one group for now, which is going to be dino group. And it will be equal to pygame.sprite.group single. So this is how you create a group single in pygame. Next, we have to add the dinosaur to the new dino group. So we'll say dino group dot add dinosaur. So now we have our dinosaur and we have our dino group, which contains our dinosaur. Now, at this point, all that's left is to draw the dino group on the screen. So after we're filling the screen with white, we're going to say dino group dot update, which is the method we made up here, which just calls the animate method. And also we're going to say dino group dot draw screen. So the draw method of the dino group just takes in a screen, which is the screen that we made, and it just puts it on the screen. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. 
Okay, so we got an error. No attribute running. Oh, I so I made a typo here. Uh, this should be running sprites instead of running sprite. Let's try running this again. And now we're going to get our dinosaur that's running insanely fast. So I see two apparent problems with this. The first is that the dinosaur is really small. We need to fix this by scaling it up. And the second, as I said, is that it's moving insanely fast. So we're going to need to slow down how fast the dinosaur moves its legs. Let's go ahead and tackle those two problems. So to fix how fast the dinosaur is moving, we're actually going to increase current image by a very small number. So like 0.05. And now we're going to convert this current image variable to an integer. And basically this is going to increase it by a very small amount. And until it surpasses a whole number like one, it's going to remain at that same frame. So this will just slow down how fast the frames switch. So let's try running this again. Oh, okay. Well, that didn't work. Oh, I think I, I think I know what the problem is. Okay, so instead we're going to say greater than or equal to two. And now let's try running this again. And this time we actually get a dinosaur that's moving at a dinosaur like pace, I guess. But yeah, now we can scale this up. So over here, we're going to say instead of pygame.image.load, we're going to say pygame.transform.scale. And let's add a bracket there and a bracket here. And let's put this on another line to make it more clean. So we're scaling this image and we're going to scale it to something like 80 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. And we're going to do the same thing for the Dino 2. So I'll just replace that and say Dino 2. Now let's try running it again. This time we're going to get a big dinosaur that's moving at a normal speed. So it looks like we've reached the end of part one. I hope you learned something in this episode, and we're going to be continuing this dinosaur game series in the future, so stay tuned for that. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, this has been Lartech, signing out. Have a good day.